In this demo, I'm going to show you how to set up your reference images in Maya so that you can model your character in 3D. So let's start with a new project folder. So I'm going to go up to File and then go down to Project Window. Right here, uh, my project is now set to the default, and so your uh, computer at your workstation will be the same thing. We're going to want to create a new folder for the character that you're creating. So let's move our mouse over here to this button right here on the right-hand side that says New. And then I'm going to rename this project. Uh, I'm going to call this Character 1, and I'll put in a dash, and we'll call it My Character's a Cat. So. Uh, we can use all the default uh, folders that it's setting up for us right here. You can look at the location. It's going to be in my user account, documents, Maya, and then projects. So if you're ever looking for that project folder, that's where you're going to find it. So let's go ahead and hit accept. And now let's check and make sure that we actually have that project folder in our finder. So I'm going to go down here and open up a finder window. And I'm going to go to documents. And then I'm going to go to Maya. I'll click on projects and there is that project folder character one cat so I'm gonna to go to list view right here and what we need to do is we need to copy over two images that we created in sketchbook pro so I'm gonna to go to file and then new finder window so I have two finder windows now and I'm gonna to go to my pictures folder and I'm gonna load I'm gonna locate the image of the front view of the cat and the image of the side view of the cat I'm going to take both of these images and I'm going to drag them over to the source images folder inside my new project folder that we just created. Okay, So now I'll double click on that and I can see right here those are the two images that I'm looking for. So that's set up. So I'm going to close these finder windows and now I'm going to go back to Maya. All right, so if you don't have your shelf tabs up, click right here and click on shelf tabs, and that's going to bring the shelf tabs up. First thing you want to do is go to surfaces, and then before we create the planes that we need, I want you to go up to create, and then go to NURBS primitives, and then make sure that interactive creation is turned off. If it, You'll know it's turned off because there's no check mark next to interactive creation. So then I'm going to go to create polygon primitives and make sure interactive creation is turned off for polygon primitives. Okay, Those are both turned off. So now what I'm going to do is under the surfaces tab I'm going to create a NURBS cube. It's going to drop it right in the center of my scene. I'm just going to press F to frame it. And then I'm going to press 6 on the keyboard and that's going to go to shaded mode. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to individually select the faces of this NURBS cube and delete them. Okay, so what, what I'm looking for is just two faces. And if I click on this home icon right here and then zoom back in, I want a face for the side and a face for the front. Okay. All right, so the next step is we're going to open up our hypershade and grab these images and put them onto these two um, planes. Basically, they're planes that we're creating a, a box. So I'm going to go to Window and then Rendering Editors, and I'm going to go over to Hypershade. So when you first open up Hypershade, it might be really small like this. Just take the bottom right corner and drag it out. And then what we want to do is we want to create two new Lamberts. We do not want to use Lambert 1. So I'm going to click on Lambert right here once and then click on it one more time. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on Lambert 2. And that's going to open it up over here in the Attribute Editor. I'm going to rename this. We're going to call this Front View Mat. Okay, I'll press Return. Now I'm going to connect the image that we created or the image that I created to this uh, material. So I'm going to go to the color attribute and click on this little checkered button right here. And then I'm going to go over here and click on file. And then I'm going to go back over to the attribute editor and click on this little folder right here. And I'm going to take the front view reference cat and then hit open. All right. So now 
I'm going to take the uh, material right here. I'm going to hold down my middle mouse button and drag this over to the viewport. This is not displaying correctly, but we're going to fix that in just a few moments. Before I do that, I want to get the second Lambert set up. So double click on Lambert 3. And now we're going to rename this. This is going to be Side View Mat. Press Return. I'm going to go over here to our color attribute. Click on the checkered button right here. Click on File. And then we're going to choose a file. So I'm going to click on this little yellow folder. And I'm going to choose Side View Reference dash cat. So I'll take my Side View Reference here. I'm going to hold down the middle mouse button and drag this to the other plane. All right. So we are all done with Hypershade. And I'm actually, I'm actually all done with my attribute editor. So I'm going to go up here and click right here for show high channel box. I'll just click on that until the channel box shows up. I'm going to select uh, the, um, the first plane here. And I'm going to go to modify and then center pivot. I'm going to select the second plane right here and go to modify and then go down to center pivot. Now I'm going to hit E for my rotate tool. I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees. I didn't get it quite right, so I'm going to go to Rotate Z and type in 90, and then press Return. Click on this uh, plane over here, and I'm going to rotate this. Oops, let's try that again. Rotate this one. So we're going to do 90 degrees on X, and then I'm going to do 180 degrees on Y. It's going to flip it so that it's facing forward. All right, so now I've got my two reference images, and they're placed correctly in the scene. The last thing I want to do is I'm just going to scale this up. Uh, I want these images much larger. So I'm going to select both of these planes, and I'm going to go to Edit, and then go down to Group. I'm going to group them. I'll press R for my scale tool, and I'm going to scale these up. And I want them to be, actually, I'm just going to go to my scale, X, Y, and Z right here, and type in 10, and then press Return. So now, I'm going to take uh, my Move tool, so I'll hit W, and move this up, and I'm going to set it right down on the grid. So our translate Y value should be 5. All right, so um, last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure both of these uh, objects are selected here. And I'm going to click on this button right here. And that's going to take those objects and put them on a new layer. I'm going to double click where it says layer 1. And I'm going to change this to ref for reference and hit save. And now I can click on this empty box, and when the R shows up, what that means is this has been put onto a reference layer, and I can no longer select or move these two objects. So now our scene is all set up, and we're ready to start the modeling process for this character.